right. Um, well, thanks everyone for coming along. I do appreciate uh, your time and uh, interest in, in coming and checking out the systems. Um, so today we're going to go through the Manager 30, as Steve said, it's in uh, a lot of the trailers out there today. Uh, so I'm basically going to take you through the system setup and then also the, the sort of information that you can get from the system from a user's point of view. Um, once we finish looking at the, uh, the management system, uh, we'll move over to the, uh, to the tow pro, to the, the brake controller. So that's a very popular brake controller that, uh, that we see um, you know, in Australia and in New Zealand as well. Sorry, can you guys hear me down the back or if you want you can come a bit closer to save me uh, losing my voice too soon. Okay, alright, very good. So yeah, if you want to take a, come closer that would be awesome. Um, if you can't hear, by all means move forward a little bit. All right, so starting with our management system, uh, there, is, there is three main components to the management system. Um, you'll see that there's a, uh, this large heat sink here, which, which is our charger. This is where all the, uh, all the hard work gets done. Um, we have on this side over here, a battery sensor. So this one is the, the part that does all the measuring. So this is gonna count every amp that comes and goes from the batteries. Uh, and also it can measure uh, battery temperature with this little probe here, uh, as well as voltage. So it can do a lot of things um, you know, to help uh, optimize charge into our battery system. Um, the last part of the system is the screen. So this is the interface that you'll have with the units and this is probably the, the, the main area that you'll have to to, um, to see what's happening with the system at any time. So what we can do and what we can see on our screens, um, it might be a little bit hard for everybody to see at the back there. It is a, a little bit of a small screen, but uh, what we might do is go through some of it and then if, if there's any questions, we can go through that specifically and a bit more closer with, uh, with you. Um, so the home screen here, we have the ability to be able to see how much power we've got as a percentage. So rather than looking at a, a one volt window now, we now look at uh, our, our state of charge as a percentage and that way we've got a hundred increments where we can actually see how much power we've got left over. We can also see how long we've got till full or flat based on what kind of loads are on the systems. So for example, if we were to say switch on some interior lights, um, our, our numbers would change here. So our time till full or flat would, would uh, either be reduced or uh, would you know, start to improve. So um, it really goes along with that management theme of managing our system. So from here, we can navigate up, down, left and right. Um, if you're pressing one button at a time, it's probably the best way to, to get used to the system. If you press one or more buttons together, you can end up in some advanced features and be a bit lost. But if you just if you do end up there and you just let it let it sit, it will revert back to the, the home screen. Speaking of the home screen, there is a small house picture on the left hand side here. So we can actually make any of these screens our home screen. For me, our percentage and time till full and flat, that tells me a lot of information at a glance. So I always set that one as my, my home screen. So as we start navigating through, we can uh, see a lot more features. So if we click down one, we can see our source information. So from here, we've got information about the three charging sources that the charger is doing. So with the charger, it is a ecosystem. So there's three components inside here. We've got a 240 volt charger, we've got a solar regulator and then we've also got a DC to DC charger. So being that it's an ecosystem, all these components can talk to each other and all these sources can work together. So it does have a green power priority and you'll actually see that on the screen here when we are sharing between solar and 240 volts. You know, if we're parked at home, we've got our mains connected but we're getting some sun on the panels. Um, and we can also share between the vehicle's alternator and the solar while we're driving down the road. So that way, you know, the solar panels that are up there, they're not doing nothing if there is another source available. 
So, um, so this screen here, you'd actually see the, the sharing between the solar and other sources that are available. You can also see the, uh, the voltages that are on those sources as well. So for example, if you've, you're interested in solar information, you could scroll down to here and see exactly how much solar you're, you're looking at. So right now the car, the solar panel on the roof here is picking up some power through these masonite sheets and uh, we're picking up 15.2 volts. So it's actually doing something even though we're in the shed here. It's not quite enough to do anything. We're not making any power with it, but uh, it's enough to you know, pick up some, some voltage on those panels. Um, from here, our next, next direction is down again. So this is gonna show us our charge current and direction of current. So using the battery sensor once again, we're gonna be able to see is the power coming from the charger and going to the battery? There is a small arrow you can see of its current direction and its number there. So right now we're using 4.1 amps. It's coming from the battery and it's going to the loads. So right now the fridge must have turned on in the car. So that's our, our fridge load that's running right now. Um, it does automatically time out and go back to its home screen if you leave it too long, but you can adjust that in the advanced settings as well to, to be a longer time frame if you are doing some things or you just navigate back to where you were previously. Um, let's go down again. This is our charging status. So this is, this is indicating to us what stage of charge we are in. Um, Right now we're obviously not charging because the vehicle's not running. We're not getting any solar and we don't have any 240 connected. Um, we have two charging modes with this guy as well. So we have a touring mode. So a touring mode is a three stage charge for AGM batteries or a, or a two stage charge for lithium. Um, and um, there is a, a maintenance mode as well. So that is a reconditioning mode. So it's a, a seven stage for reconditioning AGM batteries. So we recommend that if you're parking the van up for extended periods of time, you use the maintenance mode and then uh, that way it uh, rejuvenates the batteries while you're not actually using the, the trailer. Um, other information we can pick up here, voltage of our battery and also the temperature using the, uh, the battery sensor once again. So that is just our up and down through those screens there. Uh, once we get, oh sorry, there was one more which was time and date. So you can pick that up on this screen here as well. Um, so left and right is a bit more information. So if we start on this screen here, it's actually going to show us uh, a charging log of how their power consumption's gone over 24 hours. So you end up with a, a line scribed every hour in its state of charge, so we can actually see this one here, it's gonna be very hard for everyone in the back to see, but we can see a, um, a dip in power overnight and then it's come back up here this morning. So this is great for uh, understanding and managing the system and figuring out, you know, are we running out of power overnight? Uh, therefore, do we need more batteries or a larger battery bank to go into the trailer? Or are we not recovering the batteries throughout the day? You know, therefore, do we need you know, more solar if we're off grid, or do we need to drive, you know, tow it around behind the car to get some power from the car, or do we need to plug it into mains? And, uh, is it possible to, on the system to do, to put extra solar system? Like extra one? panels, yes. Yep. yes. What do you do with that, if you plug it in where? Yes, it will just parallel into the charger itself. So yeah, additional- like portable one, where do you plug that in? Where would you plug that in? And is there, a, is there a dedicated solar input? Yeah, and one the front. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, there would need to be a dedicated solar input for that. Uh, but yeah, you could definitely parallel multiple panels into that one there. And that will pick that up too? Yes, yeah, 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 it would share. It would take as much as it got on the roof, plus any additionals as well. So, sorry? How much can you go? How much solar? Yeah, so these units can take up to a kilowatt of solar, so a thousand watts of solar. A kilowatt, a thousand watts, yeah. So because it is a 30 amp charger, you will hit 30 amps at say 640 watts of solar, uh, but you can overclock up to a kilowatt 
But what that means is you'll hit 30 amps, you know, it's maximum output much earlier in the day when the sun's very low in the sky and then later on into the afternoon when the sun's also low in the sky. So uh, it'll just increase your high output for more hours of the day. So your watt average would increase. So we can also do a whole bunch of different stuff with this. We've got uh, alarms that we can set if we're state of charge is getting too low. We can set alarms for if our voltage is getting too low. Um, there's a whole wide range of things that can be done. Default, they're all turned off, but once you're more comfortable with the system and how to navigate a lot of the, um, the, uh, the settings, you can go ahead and, and introduce them to the system. The unit, is the alarm already set up? It's not preset, no. No, so you could do it, you do that later on, yes. Yeah, yeah. So for example, percentage state of charge. So if we've got AGM batteries, if we're cycling our batteries deeper than say 50% of its capacity, uh, we're actually doing damage to those batteries. So we're reducing the cycle life of those batteries. Um, but that is the one that comes in, not to that potential. Yes. That's right, well this is the charger, so as long as there's power available, but if we're monitoring this overnight when there's no power available, say we're off grid, we're waiting for the sun to come up in the morning to do the charging, um, we could set an alarm on here to uh, let us know if we are getting very low in our state of charge. Um, you know, that would encourage us to go around and start turning some stuff off and uh, not to deplete the whole battery bank itself. Um, we can set, um, um, we can set that for, yes, yeah, state of charge, which is probably more accurate than just voltage, but there is the ability to do voltage as well. Um, we can actually make this guy do other stuff as well. So we've got a load disconnect here that can be wired in later on to actually turn everything off if, if we want it to do that uh, at a particular state of charge. So um, it does quite a lot of things. Yeah, I, I would definitely be introducing some charge once we down as low as 55. Yeah, that's quite deep in its state of charge. Yeah, yeah. It depends on your battery type, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So if you're running lithiums, yeah, you're going to get a much deeper discharge and you can discharge them uh, much deeper than an AGM battery without doing any damage to the battery. So, yeah, those lithiums are designed to, to do just that. So on the unit, there's nothing that you can switch off the power from the solar or whatever. There's nothing like that. To switch off the power? Um, like if you want to switch the power off the van completely. Uh, yep, I think there's a, Steve, the there's a main switch. switch. A yes, switch. there is a master switch, yeah. So if you, you can just turn that off and everything's off. But that's not controlled through this system. This is just its goal, the, the manager system's goal in life is to maximize power into the batteries and to keep them at 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, that was our state of charge logging. Um, so that's our, our log over uh, the last 24 hours. So that's showing us discharge. Um, next one down, so if we go back to that voltage one and then go across again, this is showing us um, our solar information. So right now we're showing zero watts, obviously because we're not making any power with our panel, uh, but it also shows us a watt hour number. So this is how many, or well, this is a cumulative number of wattage created by hours. So today this car has made 487 watt hours of solar power. So that's uh, a really good way of monitoring what's going up on on the roof particularly if you've just got solar panels up there um, you know if you're starting to see less power than you did yesterday so if we go back to that one we go across and then we go down so yesterday we made 586 and today we're only at 487 we've got a few more hours to go so that's probably about right um, but if we were to go back a couple more da days you could see that you know that's going down now so if we ended up not making much today, less tomorrow, you know, that might encourage us to get up and have a bit of a look on what's going on up on top of the panel. You know, maybe there's, you know, a bird's made a big mess up there and it's, you know, stopping us from producing in much solar. Yeah, just dust, dust even, yeah, yeah. So that's another, another feature of the system. Um, 
So yeah, that really gives us the, uh, the ability to monitor everything that's going on with our system, power in, power out, and uh, how long we've got, how long it's gonna last. So that's the interface there. So the, the charger itself, I didn't go over that, but um, this is the beast here. It, um, it has our 240 volt input at this end. So that's our mains connection. So when we plug the trailer in, uh, power's gonna come in and we'll be charging from 240 volts. Um, the other end here with the green connector, everything else is wired to that. So we've got vehicle input, uh, we've got a solar input, we've got an ignition trigger. So if we have a, uh, a European vehicle or a Ford Ranger or Everest, uh, we may need to have an ignition trigger coming to this guy here. Um, Navara, yes. Smart alternator. Um, we've got a common ground and we've got our output to our batteries. Phoenix connector, so it's designed for manufacture, this, these units, so they're designed to be nice and simply uh, installed. You know, once it's installed, you know, this will be under the bed area and then obviously we'll only have the, uh, the screen to, to interface with, uh, with the system. It has the ability to do all battery chemistries. So it'll do all your AGM batteries, your um, um, you know, standard lead acid and also lithium batteries. Um, when we do connect a, a battery to the system, so if you've got AGM batteries today and then you know, in a year's time you wanna upgrade to some lithium, once you disconnect your old batteries and reconnect the new ones, the screen will always ask us what we're charging. So what chemistry is it and how big is it? So how big is the capacity? Uh, from there, you'll need to put it through a charge cycle. So it wants to get those batteries to 100% and then it'll count using the, the battery sensor all the power coming and going from the system so we can monitor that accurately. So, so yeah, look, it's, uh, it's, not, it's got a lot of features, but it's not really scary at all. Um, you know, as I said, when you get closer to the day or uh, um, if you're really interested in, in uh, learning more about it, there's a lot more, more stuff on our website, videos. Um, you can download the manuals and stuff from that as well. Um, um, to get a bit of understanding and do a bit of reading up on it, so. Do you set up a new Anderson plug? Do you recommend you still put an isolator on the car? Or would you just um, you don't need to. So the Manager 30 has an isolator. Mm -hmm. So it works to isolate from the starting battery if there's no ignition trigger uh, connected to it or, or not, not powered up at the time. So uh, and it's below the voltage. Okay. So it'll actually see that your, your car battery's getting too low for... Yes. Yep, so all of our products uh, from you know, the top where we've got the manager system all the way down to say the isolator, they all operate on the voltage of 13.2 volts on, 12.7 volts off. So your battery, your starting battery resting voltage is about 12.7, oh, 12.8. .7, 12 so once it gets to that, it'll isolate between the two. So that way we won't run the starting battery flat and when we want to hit the key and go, it'll start and we'll be able to continue on our trip. Would you put one on as a secondary anyway? Or? Uh, look, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, I, 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 it's an exercise in spending money, so I probably wouldn't worry about it. Worry about it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, myself, I've got a battery, which is the one that runs the car. Yes. But also I've got another battery, which right. I can switch on and off. Okay. Now, if I leave that by itself, yes. I'll Something happened to this one. I can always use. Oh, you can jump start yourself. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're both connected, but yes. Got you got to isolate it between them. Manual. Off. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fine. No, yeah. <laughs> well, you have to. And the worst thing is not having batteries. How do you put the car? Well, that's what yeah. Not to get it. Exactly. Exactly. And it's it's moment, a smarter way of doing it. Yeah. 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 Bank, yeah. Sorry, yeah. yeah. The old way, the old system, if you forget to That's it, exactly right. Uh, the track is that's when right. you leave and you know you're going to go for an hour or two, you just put it on before you go and you know that it's charging. You know, so. Exactly, exactly. Uh, inverters are another good one to talk about actually. So um, on the trailers that have our inverter on it, you'll see that there is a little remote to turn the inverter on and off, take it in and out of standby. If you're not using the inverter for anything in particular, make sure you take it out of standby and turn it off. Uh, the inverters have a standby current and uh, the 2000 watt inverter 
can pull, you know, four or five amps. So it's just wasted power if it's just in standby. Just turn it off. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yes. Yep. Three AGM batteries. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you can run up to 800 amp hours of batteries on the system. Um, bearing in mind that it is only a 30 amp charger. And when I say only, it's a big charger. 30 amps is a, a, a pretty, pretty sizable output charger. Uh, but the bigger the capacity bank you're going for, the longer the charge time is going to be at 30 amps. So beauty of this one here is we can actually supplement the power uh, with an additional uh, DC charger, so one of our BC-DCs, uh, and we can parallel the inputs and outputs so we can multiply our, our power to our batteries. So if you were going to a you know, two, three, 400 amp hour lithium uh, battery bank, um, you could uh, say pair a 50 amp BC-DC with this guy here for a cumulative power input. So, yeah, yeah, look, it's not advisable with, with AGMs. Only, only cause it's, yeah, it's only really with lithium that it's, yeah. that it's an advantage because, they'll, they'll suck as much as you can give exactly, it. it'll be in boost most of the, uh, the charge time and be at full current. Whereas AGM's gonna slip into float, which is low current. So. We got out of it and it was, whatever, whatever's on the dashboard, we're meant to be lithium ready. Steve, is that right? Yeah, yeah, the lithium ready to go for lithium, you can swap yep. all this so AGMs what, out. So yeah. what does that mean? If I'm sick of the AGMs, I can just go straight into... Absolutely. Yep, you'll disconnect your old batteries, they'll come out, new ones will go in, you'll reconnect it exactly the same. And go. And you'll, uh, it'll ask you, it'll ask you, so it'll end up asking you um, questions like this. So what type of battery is this? Right. So you'll go in there and then, yeah, you'll select, yeah, lithium gel, AGM, lead acid, calcium, Lithium, and then once you're happy with that, it'll ask you how big is the capacity. So this one's obviously set for 100 amp hour. 100, 100, you know, yeah. 100 amp, 200 here, three yep. or four of them, they're all 100 amp. Yeah, you just, absolutely, you just dial it up till you get to your number and then press OK, away you go. Is, is any one of them better than the other as far as the batteries are concerned, lithium over AGM? Uh, yeah, most certainly. So lithium, lithium, is a, um, a much higher energy density battery. So because we've got 100 amp hours usable in a good quality lithium battery, it's comparable, well, sorry, I should go back one step. So an AGM battery at 100 amp hours only realistically has 50 amp hours usable. That's right, down to 50% instead of charge. Um, sorry? Lithium's got more, depending on the brand. So if it's a red arc lithium, it's a 100 amp hour usable. So, so we've got a 100 amp hours usable there. So one lithium battery is comparable to two of those AGM batteries, power wise. Usable power wise. And they recharge Yeah, they recharge a hell of a lot faster. So uh, one lithium battery is gonna weigh about 12 kilos. Uh, one AGM battery is about 35 kilos. So yeah, you, you know, if, you, if weight's critical, then you know, that's the, the easiest way to reduce weight in a trailer. The, um, the usage of your lithium, your voltage, I think, uses 100% all the way down. To exactly. Where the, the AGM batteries taper off, don't they? Well, that's right. An AGM discharge curve will drop down in voltage. So we'll end up, say, at 13.2 volts, coming all the way down to 12 volts where we're flat. Yeah. So there's not a... You know, there's a, there's a steady arc. Uh, with lithium, it'll just sit at 13.2 volts the whole way through till we've consumed the, the full capacity and then it'll turn off. So it'll drop to zero volts. Yeah. So can you get a warning of some sort to save it through this? You can, you just... yes. You'll need to set it up to do it though, yes. Because you don't want to be out in your scrub off the Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, if you're, if you're consistently you know, hitting that low state of charge or running flat every night, you know, that's either gonna be two things. It's either you need to turn the lights off a bit earlier, you know, or we need a bigger capacity battery. I just so. suggest don't let them get up like your AGMs, do not let them get under six. Yeah. yeah. We've, we've yeah. had AGMs for years. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Well, with a with a any kind of battery, um, the life of a battery is measured in cycles. So cycles are measured from 100% state of charge down to 50 for a lead acid based battery. Um, so with a good AGM battery, you're probably going to get a thousand cycles out of it. So if you're discharging your batteries to 50% every day, that could equate to a thousand days worth of use before it's no longer holding charge and you know plummeting in voltage overnight sort of thing. So, so if you're using if you're using your, your your trailer all day every day, then then yeah, a lithium upgrade is a is a, a definitely a, a an advantage. Yeah. Plus, yeah, the lightweight and faster charging. You know, it's yeah. There's a long list of advantages with it. Um, Do they get memories? Do the batteries get memories? The no, school? lithium doesn't develop a memory. So you can, ideally you'd want to be hitting 100% yeah. often, um, but if you're only cycling say the top, say 10% of its capacity, it's not even, doesn't even see it as a cycle. So, you know, if you're only using the very top part of your lithium cycle, you know, your cycle life of a lithium battery is going to get much longer. So, you know, if you're abusing the battery or using the full cycle, I should say, um, you might get say, you know, 3,000 to 4,000 cycles out of it. But if you're only using the, a small amount from the top of it, you, know, you could get up to 10,000 cycles out of it. So, you know, this could be the last set of batteries you ever buy. Yeah. You know, and... That was the other thing I was going to say, how long you use, like... Yeah, it's, it's de it, it depends on the, the, the usage. Yeah, so if you're not cycling it, it's going to get a much longer life, same as anything. Uh, but if we are cycling it hard, that life's going to be, yeah, a bit, a bit shorter. It all depends how long they last, the late one. Because yeah. if they last... Let's say an example that lasts you two years. Yeah. And the other one lasts ten years. Yes. And then you multiply how much. Exactly. Know, so if you're looking at the cost down. comparison, yeah. so because we've got one battery compared to say two batteries, yeah. two of those AGM batteries are say four hundred bucks each. Yeah. Um, and you're replacing those every thousand days, yeah. or you buy one lithium yeah. battery that's, that's, that's gonna be ten thousand cycles. Yeah. But it's you know it's it's more than double the life, but it's not double the cost. Well, the van comes so. with the battery so much. We're just using. Absolutely, the use the ones that you've got first. Oh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> use them first, and then when uh, when they're no longer serviceable or they're yeah running out of power overnight, then get them. New ones in. Uh, <laughs> well, look, the beauty of the lithium is that you know because you're going to get such a long cycle life out of it, even if you decide to buy a new Oz track down the down the road. Yeah, you, know, you pull those ones out and you'd put them in your next one. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah, you wouldn't yeah, you, know, you wouldn't sell them with it. You'd give the new owner some some AGMs. Give them the experience. <laughs> <laughs> so those lithium, that's what they call the deep cycle one. Is that uh, different? No. Different, yeah. Different. Yeah. So your lithiums, I should have bought one along with me. Uh, your lithiums uh, they look like a normal battery, yeah. uh, but instead of being thirty five kilos, they're like twelve kilos. So, first time I went to go and pick one up, I nearly put it through the roof. Yeah. What did you expect to pick up big batteries? Yeah, yeah, because you're expecting 35 kilos. Yeah, yeah. So, so yes. So yeah, it's a, it's an awesome thing. It's this this product's been in the market now for um, uh, nine years. So you know, it's got some real stability to it. It's well known. You know, um, um, so you know, if you ever. Unit that hasn't got that sort of stuff, is that? Um, this can go in anything. This is, yeah, all of our products are universal. They're not vehicle specific. So, you know, this is at home in your Oztrack caravan camper yeah, I mean, or in your vehicle. Yeah, this comes standard. Yeah. That's, that's this is the system. Time. Yep. Solar yep. Okay. When adding additional solar, say one of your folding kits, just make sure it doesn't have its own regulator on the back of the panel. Uh, because, yeah, you got to bypass any other regulators because this has a regulator. And if we're already getting regulated power to it, we're not going to make any additional power because this is looking for unregulated. Yes, yeah, most of them you can. Yeah, yeah. Some can, you can just unplug. Others you might have to do a bit of a cut and shut. But um, yeah, yeah, most of them do. This has got an MPPT. This has got MPPT. Yep, yep. Yep, so maximum PowerPoint tracking, so, so yeah. So you can yeah. run a computer laptop on those 
that the currencies goes up and down or is it uh, MPPT holds the, the voltage and current and it loads the panel to hold it at its maximum power point. So you get a... Your inverter, your inverter, sine wave inverter, not that. No, it's inverter is what will give you the power to your... That's right. So this is power in to the battery. Inverter is power out of the battery to charge other things or power other things. There's a lot of things I have to run. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you yeah. You yeah, absolutely. That's why we're here. Um, yeah. <laughs> Look, if you if you go to our, we've got a YouTube channel as well. So if you jump on there, we've got hundreds of videos on this and that and all the all the stuff we do. Yeah, it's 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 good if you. Yeah, you're better off going to the source. So go go to the manufacturer of the components. You'll get you'll get the information straight from there. So any questions as well, I probably should have mentioned that. Uh, we have a tech support hotline, so there is a, a, a local Adelaide number that you can call. You can speak to one of our teams. So there's six auto electricians on the phone. If you're using it one day and you can't remember what we went through today, or you've got new questions, you can't find it on the website, pick up the phone, give us a call. We'll kick on into uh, the Tow Pro. Um, anyone got a Tow Pro or used a brake controller? A few. Got a few, okay, good, good. So, um, <laughs> sorry? Ours is the right Oh, right, okay. All right, well, this might change your mind then. So, Tow Pro is the um, same thing. It comes out of our factory in Adelaide there. It's all designed, uh, developed, manufactured from the ground up uh, for our conditions. Um, so, with Tow Pro, we, uh, we wanted to build something that was not going to be in the way, you know, not going to be distracting, um, easy to use and adjust on the fly. So um, we went away from having the, uh, the big box style thing that has to go where your knee likes to live when you're driving um, and went to this remote head style unit here. Um, the unit is unique in the way that it has two modes. So we have a, a proportional mode so, meaning that the tow pro is feeling how hard the car is braking when we're braking, and it applies an even or a proportional amount to the trailer. So that way, we get even braking, and you know, if you're pulsing on the the brake pedal, it's feeling that and making adjustments the whole time. Why don't we talk about that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that would be just a proportional brake controller. So um, great for on road, uh, around town. No problems at all. Uh, it'll be suitable for any braking system. So it works with electric brakes, it works with electric over hydraulic. Uh, anything you can throw at it, this guy will, uh, will, will handle. Um, the beauty of the two modes is that we've got a manual mode as well. So instead of having proportional, we can actually pull over to the side of the road, we wind our dial to zero, we hold our foot on the brake, and we double press this button here. So once we've double pressed, we get an LED color change, and now we're in the manual mode. Um, what manual means is we can actually control exactly how much power we've got to our trailer. So this one we use when we're off-road. So the reason why we would use this one off-road is if we were in, say, uh, going on a, a, a downhill descent, and we had it in our proportional mode, say, so we're braking, we're coming down the hill, we've got our foot on the brake. So all the brakes are live, but the car's hitting bumps and lumps and stuff like that as we're going down the hill. And that inertia is now making the units, the proportional units think that they've got, um, you know, additional braking power happening. So it'll be grabbing the trailer brakes as we're going down that hill. So, um, so instead of doing that and you know, accidentally getting yourself into a jackknife situation, um, we would select the manual mode and then we could just have it so we just had very light braking just to drag as we're coming down. If we wanted to, we could also press and hold the button to manually override the trailer brakes. So that way we can pull the, uh, the, the trailer brakes on independently from the vehicle. When you're coming down a steep incline, yes. say a lot of the time fans might do this. Wobbling, yes. So when you come down, you just adjust the track. Yes. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Well, that pulling, pulling the 
either mode has that, so a proportional or our um, manual mode has the override feature. Yep. Um, and it is a great thing if you're getting some sway, yeah, pull that on. That'll put tension between the two vehicles and it'll stop that sway from happening. Um, I think there was a tow ed. Was there a tow ed? One of these just recently? Oh, uh, yeah. There Last was? Month. Last month, okay. Yeah. Anyone, anyone here for that one? Okay. Right on. They would have gone through all this as well, so. so. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yep. Yeah, this will work in conjunction with that. Yeah, yep. This works together. So, your sway control would be individual braking left and right. So, when it feels the trailer go this way, it'll pull the brake on that side, that way, this side. So that way you can steady it out without having to do anything at all. But if you were to apply the brakes as well, that would just bring everything on together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the older, before brake controls and that sort of thing were around back in the day, the old way to do it was just to hit the, hit the throttle. That would do the same thing, put tension between the, the, the two vehicles. But the problem is if that didn't work, you just ended up with a high speed sway, which was even more dangerous. So. So, um, so yeah, this is a much safer way of doing it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, you know, once this is installed, that's all you'll see is just the, the dial. So, power-wise, we we use the dial, um, which would you know from zero to ten, and that adjusts how aggressive we want that proportional braking. So. A lot of people think that, you know, what weight do I need to set for what number? It's, there's no rules. It's what, you, it's what feedback from the trailer that you'd like to feel. So what I'd like to do is set it up for, say, four, you know, with the Red Arc label is level, almost. You know, five's level, but four is kind of like that. Um, so when you hook up, if you have a glance and you, it's like that and not upside down or, you know, like that, you'll know that you, you're pretty much right. Um, but you'll, you'll know pretty much straight away because if you've got too much power, you'll feel like you're going to hit the windscreen and uh, you know, if there's not enough there, you'll feel you're getting a push. So a couple of clicks either way is how we adjust it. So you know, if you want more power, give it a couple of clicks up. If that's too much power, a couple of clicks back, you'll find that happy medium of where you're happy. Um, from there, you probably wouldn't need to make much of an adjustment to it unless the weight of the trailer increased or decreased significantly. So I think... Um, um, horse float, so horses in, heavy, so you'd have a high number, uh, horses out, light trailer now, low number. So we might have two in that sort of scenario. But for a trailer like this, unless you had it, it'd be, minimal, like, it'd it'd be, be a couple of clicks. Yeah. Yet. Exactly, less food, less water on board potentially, you know, less beer, yeah. you know, <laughs> whatever you poison. <laughs> so, so yeah, you know, a couple of clicks here or there is you know, the way to go with, with adjusting it. So I take it that's working off like a gyroscope or something, is it? On the uh, accelerometer. accelerometer. Yeah, yeah. So this main unit in here, you, you probably won't see it unless you actually do your own install. Uh, but it'll be mounted somewhere firm under the dash. Um, and that can be mounted at any orientation as well. So any which way you like. Yes. And you are in a like heartbreak situation. Yes. Will still even in the auto mode. Yep. Jam those brakes on if required. Yes. Depends on how hard you hit that mode. Exactly. It's how hard the car, the the whole thing starts decelerating. Yeah, right. So as soon as it starts, well, as soon as it sees brake power first, accelerometer. Yeah. So as soon as it sees brake power, it starts to look at how hard are we braking, and then it'll adjust from there. So if we've hit the pedal hard. Yeah, it'll go straight to full power, but if we've, you know, if we're just gently touching it, you know, it'll just be coming on gently. And as it, you know, as it adjusts, it'll be up and down sort of thing. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like um, the old pendulum style, you know, where the pendulum would swing forward under braking uh, and then come back. This is just a digital version of it. So. What is, what is the cost of having that put into your car? It varies. So the unit itself retails for 360. Um, depending on the vehicle, if you've got a Ford Ranger or an Everest, unfortunately, there's a harness that you need for it, uh, which is another $300. Um, why, why is that for the Ford? Uh, the Fords have got a very sophisticated braking system. So they have this autonomous braking, lane departure assist, and uh, tra automatic trailer detection. And without a harness, it'll 
it'll see a brake controller and, uh, of any type and um, it'll think that it's towing. So it'll go into tow mode. So you'll have double speed flashing indicators because it's trying to monitor its trailer output now, but there's no trailer connected. So there's no load there. So it's indicating that we've got blown bulbs. Um, you'll lose your reversing sensor and, and um, um, reversing camera. Um, so, and, and worst case, you'll get codes. So yeah, that's, uh, this is the, the, the tow pro. Um, I think I've covered uh, across all the, the features on that one. Um, it does have a handbrake feature. So in the, ma uh, sorry, in the uh, proportional mode, if we do stop on a hill, it'll hold the brakes on if we move in any direction. So, so for example, we're stopped on a hill like this, we'll get our foot on the brake. If we take our foot off the brake and roll back, it'll grab the brakes of the trailer a little bit, just dragging it. So, and it does that in any direction. So you will get a bit of a jolt when you take off going up a hill, because uh, it's, it's trying to hold the brakes on a little bit for you there, so you don't have roll back. Um, so we've got multiple mounting options as well. So one of the, if your vehicle's got those blanks, you know, switch blanks, you know, we, we do produce uh, vehicle specific inserts. So it gives a nice factory finish. Oh um, uh, yes. That there, yeah. Yeah, it's all under, so, so yeah. Um, it's the only brake control in the market that also meets the ADR21 standard. So ADR21 standard refers to uh, the, the height that it sits from what they call the crash pad or dashboard uh, and the material that it's made of. So it's made of a, a soft material, soft enough that it's... Sorry? Yeah, yeah. So when, you, when you're talking um, mine sites and that sort of thing, ADR, um, uh, meeting ADRs is very important. So hence why they have this in, in all those vehicles too.